Hi everybody, it's Julie and today I'm trying something very new. I've never done it before, but I've always wanted to try it. And I'm going to be painting with coffee. So this is a coffee themed card painted with coffee. I'm gonna grab uh, the one of the larger speech bubble dies and run that through with a piece of Canson XL 140 pound watercolor paper and then pop that into the lid of my Misty. Now, the reason I die cut that first is I wanted to make sure I had the spacing um, to allow for me to position all of these different stamp images from a Breve note into a sort of like collage because I wanted it to look like all these coffee um, images were floating around up in the speech bubble. And then I'm going to ink up with a VersaFine Claire, which is a pigment ink. And whenever I do watercolor work on watercolor paper, I really prefer to stamp with this VersaFine Claire because it's a pigment ink and it stamps very crisply and the color is very richly saturated and you can emboss it if you want to but when I use dye ink even if it's archival or you know bleed proof it still feathers on watercolor paper and I don't get as crisp an image as I like so I prefer to use this pigment ink. Now I use the color acorn because I wanted to keep these brown hues. I'm going for a monochromatic effect. And then I grabbed an old porcelain palette that I've had for a while and it has these different wells but you could use little bowls um, if you have them handy for your different uh, saturations of coffee. And then I added some instant coffee crystals and I added a little bit um, in each little uh, well here, depending on how intense uh, the color I wanted to make. And then I'm gonna add some hot water. I took a measuring cup and heated up some water in the microwave, and then I'm using a pipette to put drops of water into these little wells here. And I'm trying to decide, you know, how much water do I wanna add? How diluted do I want this coffee to be? How thick and intense do I want it to be? And I wanted at least three different um, intensities of coffee just to see what it was like. And so I've got one that's pretty um, light down here at the bottom, and then the middle one is a little thicker, and I'm see I'm adding a little bit more water here. But you want to stir it up and mix it really well, and hot water really helps get those crystals dissolved completely and mixing it really well. So now I'm just going to do some testing to see how this paint kind of works, or how coffee works as a paint. And it's very interesting. The lightest color seems to move uh, and flow on the watercolor paper more like a watercolor paint and then the middle one is a little bit heavier but the last one is very thick and it can get kind of sticky so um, you may or may not like that I was just I found it just very interesting and I can't say whether or not like I like it or I don't like it <laughs> I just found it was very different so now I'm going to move on to my project now that I know how they kind of behave and I'm going to start with the lightest one here first. And this was just like pretty much like painting watercolors on here, only just everything's going to be brown. And then when I moved to the darker color, I noticed, ooh, this is spreading more like chocolate syrup, sort of that kind of viscosity. Does that make sense? <laughs> So anyway, it just didn't flow. It was more like paint paint and you had to really manipulate it and push it um, to get it to go anywhere. Now I probably could have put droplets of water on it and that would have moved it around a little bit, but I didn't want to dilute it too much. I wanted it to remain darker. So I just kind of went back and forth um, playing around with these and which is something I would encourage you to do, just kind of play around and see what you like. Um, I'm spreading this really dark, um, color of the coffee here where I have the coffee showing in the coffee cups and using lighter colors to actually paint the cups themselves. So I wanted to have some contrasting effects here. Now I suppose you could start out with just one strength and stick with that strength. Um, but I thought, what the heck, you know, I got a lot of coffee crystals. I'm not going to drink all that. So <laughs> and it smells so good while you're painting. It's like really cool to have just like this mm, I love the smell of coffee and I'm just slopping it around so I'm going to add more a little bit to add some shading in areas and one thing um, I noticed is I can use water to lift out some of the coffee if I want to um, if I, I want to create highlights or if I felt like I got too much coffee in one area and I want to correct it um, or if I wanted to create a pattern I could rinse the brush out with water you know, and 
tap it against um, my paper towel, make sure there's no coffee uh, tint in it, and then load up with some clean water and just paint with the water into the coffee and it lifts the color out. And then you can wipe it off your brush and add more water to your brush and go back in and continue to lift, swipe and lift out color or coffee. It reacts. Even when it's dry, it seems to react again to the water. So this is something, um, you know, you don't ever want to get your project wet if, once you have it where you like it. <laughs> so because and you'll just have coffee going all over the place. But anyway, it was a really fun experiment. I love that my card ended up smelling like coffee. So this is a great idea to send to your friends who love coffee. Um, just kind of a very novel concept. My daughter came in to my studio and saw this and she picked it up and she instantly, um, she loved the card design itself. But then she, when she smelled it, she was like, oh my gosh, it actually smells like coffee. So she's all over that. She's like, I need this stamp set. <laughs> so I'm going to have to hook her up. <laughs> so here I am painting some stripes on this blank coffee cup. So that's kind of fun. I suppose I could probably um, paint words, I guess. If I had a super fine paintbrush, I could paint some words on there. The other thing I didn't think about was that I could probably do some heat embossing and resist um, paint over the top with the coffee. So to add some splatters, I just took some of that coffee and loaded it onto an acrylic block. And I suppose I, I suppose I could just like tap the brush, but I really like a lot more control with my spatter. So I prefer to flick it right off that block there. And you'll notice that when the darker the coffee is, when it dries, it becomes shiny when it's dry and it has to be pretty thin and diluted to dry matte. So I'm kind of thinking, okay, okay, so if I wanted to preserve that matte look and get darker colors, um, what, how would I approach this? So I'm going to have to experiment a little bit more. Another thing I'd love to do is to actually paint the stamp with the coffee and stamp it and see how that works out. I think that could be really cool too. So anyway, if you play around with this, um, have fun. I'd love to hear how things turn out for you. And thanks for watching.